Whoa W. Tips and tricks you may not know. I will separate these into different categories for the sake of making it easier to understand. I will put timestamps in the video. What this is, is it will explain the various tips and tricks I found from the two years I've been playing WoW. Yes, I started playing two years ago, right as BFA launched. Whether these tips are useful or not, they will at least help someone. These tips are a range of things. Efficiency, minimum maximuming, and some specific tips like class ability usage. Make a human hunter for grinding. I cannot stress this enough. The flexibility you have with this class race combo is insane. Easy aggro with barrage. You can afk whilst doing annoying dailies, dungeons, or aids by putting your pets on defensive mode. It's an opportunity you don't want to miss. Also, they may be good at achievements and farming. Alt interrupts, including leaving combat or lows. This is an interrupt that can be done as an alternative to your main interrupt, or if you're a class who doesn't have a passive interrupt, like Warlock for example, you'd use fear. Paralyze, ice trap, anything like that. But, there are abilities which lock onto you, like ice spritzers in mother load, where you can feign death to get rid of it. With line of sight, this is for tanks specifically, but you can avoid taking damage by line of sighting casters. Interrupt near the end of a cast. This can surprisingly apply to PvP too. Usually when you're against a foe who casts, or the tank is, the chances are, the cast means they're not using an auto attack, which most enemies use. This is beneficial for many reasons. The auto attack slash other spell is not being used. There's more downtime on the enemy as a result of being locked from their abilities. AOE looting. I don't know if anyone in the WoW community knows this trick. But it maximizes efficiency. Loot has an AOE radius, as we all know. But did you know that the loot only works depending on the position you stand in? As someone who farmed timeless coins, as you will see in the video, I noticed that it loots the surroundings depending on where you stand. There is a radius. Camera positioning. Any tabbers in the chat? I use tab a lot to do my targeting. Though I will explain later why this is unhealthy. But, if it is a feature you feel comfortable with, and you find that maybe you're too comfortable, and begin pulling trash in a dungeon from the side, here's a trick you may not know. You can position your camera by zooming it in or out, and turning it, so you don't have those nameplates of the enemies to the side on your screen, which does stop you from being able to target them. This positioning can prevent so many wipes if you're a ranged class. Farm enemies via biggest AoE and fastest talents. Hunters barrage. Paladins can't secret talent. ETC. This is an efficiency tip. As a hunter. For farming reps and dungeons and raids and such. For old content. I use trailblazer. Post haste. And aspect of the beast. And I use a cunning pet. Which gives me a lot of extra movement speed. I also use barrage as a talent. As a paladin. You want to make your AoEs wider. As other specs, you need to find possibly instant cast abilities. Or if you can't, you can kill one enemy of a pack and lead them to the boss as long as they don't do annoying abilities. Most enemies do nowadays sadly. Learn patterns of enemies. Throughout Azeroth, there are enemies who will use a variety of abilities. Learning what each enemy does is helpful and will help with your class gamma play too. Due to knowing how you can maximize your damage output whilst also utilizing interrupts and such. The best example of this, I can find, is if you find a pack of enemies as you're questing, who are in your way, and you know they both do a deadly interrupt, you can CC one and deal with the first. Or if you're a shaman and you know enemies can cast interrupts, use your trainer totem. Alt tab ed. Whether it's traveling, or being peppergar in a dungeon, the chances are, you're bored. 
I play WoW in windowed full screen mode, which performs fine, but this also means I can alt tab. I often do this during long cast times, or down times, or maybe even traveling. And even if it's for a few seconds, do it. It's sufficient. And it especially helps if you're someone who works from home and struggle at being productive. Do all the sweaty work before you queue up for a dungeon. But do all the thinking in the dungeon and write notes in between playing the dungeon. Straff the wall. In almost all content, this is a time saver and a skip. If you've ever played racing games, you'd know that trying to cut a corner is the fastest way around the track, because it keeps your momentum well. This applies to all games, including WoW. Whilst it's not momentum based, by at least strafing the wall, you save seconds, which is an obvious speed running tip. Attack from behind as melee. If any wherever you can, attack from behind. For years I didn't realize my melee attacks could be blocked or parried by enemies. Attacking from behind can prevent that. Get used to clicking on nameplates. It's faster and easier. Seriously. It's also better because if you're used to tab targeting, you will most likely screw one up every once in a while. And that's detrimental if it's an interrupt you missed. Clicking on nameplates is far easier and far quicker. Especially if you're a tank who lost aggro. Read your abilities again. Especially in new patches. And check spellbook. One of the dumbest things that any player can do in WoW, as I've done it, is not reading abilities properly and forgetting spells in my spellbook. It's always worth checking them again, especially for a new patch because there may be changes to the ability that you didn't know about. Faster world quests. If you only farm emissaries, you may want to create a route based on the quickest world quests. For example, there's 4 backquote slay this enemy world quests. If I choose to do those 4 as opposed to the longer world quests which have a grind, I save a lot of time by doing the single enemy slay quests. It's small, but useful. For doing them all quickly, try to plan a route in your head, especially if the world quests are far spread out. It also helps you utilize a flight master whistle, since Pathfinder is still a thing. Extra reputation. If you've ever wondered if there is an additional way to earn reputation for a certain reputation, Try completing quests given by quest givers of that reputation. AFK mode. If you need to go AFK in an instance, put someone on follow and get into that habit. Easier trade. I actually saw this on a smart gold stream. Not sure who created it. If you need to trade someone in a group or aid, right click the name, follow, and then you'll find them. Much easier than just standing still. Get weak auras. Holy fuck. If you play a class that has talents or abilities which do something to benefit the gamma play, like for example, elemental shamans with earth shield, then you most definitely want a weak aura to keep track of that. These little things can really help in the high end. Patience is key. Even though WoW is far from a good game, it's important to note that it is a time-wasting game, given you don't have a psychological issue like me, where attractiveness of characters and collecting is addictive. But in the farming of those things, patience is key. Similarly if you're leveling a character, don't overpull if you don't think you can handle it. Otherwise that wipe sets you back another couple minutes which is unnecessary. Slow and steady wins a race. I say a race because there is no back quote the in world of Warcraft. Now for a PC performance tip. If your PC sucks, limit FPS. This is especially helpful if your PC is prone to overheating. 
as long as you don't mind lowering the FPS too far, limiting it will actually be good for your hardware and your software. I have mine at 75 FPS, as that is a comfortable place. It gives my CPU enough processing power to run HD YouTube videos, whilst keeping my game fairly lagless. And it also makes the hardware last longer. Maximizing FPS is how you destroy your hardware. Also, clean your PC with a can of air every so often. Disable add-ons you don't need for bits of content. This is really important. Especially if you use an add-on like all the things. Disable it when you're not using it. Raiding later? Disable it after the invite goes out. You save FPS and loading times. It's a nice bit of extra performance. Not to mention the heaviest add-ons are those which are in use a lot. Squeeze skips. Similarly to strafing the wall, but is far more tricky. These skips I'm talking about is understanding the detection radius of enemies. It varies from enemy to enemy, but if you know their detection radius, then good. The way to know is to start a step towards them. Some skips in WoW are insane, and you can actually squeeze past two packs of mobs if you're lucky. Sadly not every player will know, let alone do this. One mechanic a day time. If you have cognitive issues with dungeons and raiding, and taking in mechanics, make sure you do one mechanic at a time and focus, that until you understand fully what it does, it helps, and eventually you learn all the other mechanics. It's like making the perfect sandwich. You start with the bread, then add your toppings, and eventually, you'll finish with the other slice of bread. If it isn't obvious, you should be looking at one thing at a time. If it's an ability called backquote shadow nova, then look out for that. Ability function recognition. Similar to the top, but for more experienced players. Did you know staple abilities on enemies have similar names? If something has backquote bolt in it, it is single target and not worth bothering with. What about shadow nova? You bet you have to bother with that. Some abilities have easy to spot names which do what they mean, and can be attached to other enemy abilities in the game. You remember that cultist from that one dungeon who spammed Shadow Bolt? Well, now you're confronted with an enemy using Frost Bolt. Wow. I'll be honest though, this isn't obvious to most players. Stack on the tank, in certain raids, and most definitely in a lot of dungeons, standing on, or standing near the tank, helps so much. I get fed up of tanking, when players decide to run away, when they have aggro on an enemy. This wastes so much time and ends up in disaster, when the optimal thing you can do, is run towards the tank. Because the tank gets aggro easier and has AoE, there is no excuse to not stand near your tank. Unless there is definitely an ability which cleaves or AOEs. If in doubt of where to go, follow the tank. Most of the time, new players get lost. And it's often best to follow the leader of the group, or the tank who is moving ahead at all times. Because they know where to go, most of the time. Stop losing aggro as a tank with this simple trick. Other tanks hate him. As a tank, use at least one damaging ability on each enemy once to avoid losing aggro, and repeat. As someone who has tanked for hundreds of hours whilst leveling, the biggest issues happen when someone is healing a lot, or the arcane mage bursts like a 10 year old cyst. This trick would avoid that. As long as you damage an enemy, it will keep aggro on you. Also, utilize taunt in those situations too, where someone has taken aggro, because of high single target damage. AFK trick. 
If you go AFK, follow someone by clicking on them, try to only follow the healers, since they won't lead you into danger, and will most definitely be with the rest of the time. Share quests. As is the leveling experience, you have quests which you can pick up. You should share them when a new player joins. Also, you can have a bit of fun by picking up the impossible quests in PvP and share that. Summon Ivas the Forest Lord inside Blackrock Spire somehow. First and most important one, read the abilities properly. I made this mistake when I first played and just assumed I knew the class by briefly reading the abilities in my spellbook. Took me a year to realize BM Hunters had Frenzy as an ability, but not in the spellbook which is Blizzard's mistake. Maximizing Arcane Mage. A big mistake I see arcane mages do sometimes, during dungeons anyway, is they'll use all their abilities, but not replenish mana. The trick for this is to put food on the action bar, blink ahead of the tank, and eat just before the next pull. Very easy, and very quick. Character snapping. Unlike the MDI trick, called I think pixel snapping, I might have got that wrong. This trick utilizes mobility, using demon hunter's backleap, or a hunter's disengage. You simple run in the direction you want to, then turn the camera to face backwards, using mouse 1, because mouse 2 moves the character, then quickly, turn with mouse 2 and use your ability, and you'll not waste momentum this way. Hunter, Warlock Tip. You should put your summon pets on your hotbar for easier access. As a hunter, you have a dismiss button in your pet utility ability. Pet tips. Whether it's shaman fire elemental, or warlock or hunter pets, make sure you use the abilities at your disposal. Like for example, as a shaman, put the duty of your fire elemental on multiple targets, because it won't do it automatically, and use meteor. Use leech or health drain in, to counter health gates abilities. Depending on your spec and the abilities you have, you may have a backquote leech ability. In harder or health gated instances you are over leveled 4, you can use the leech abilities and get a massive health bonus. Using Warlock's Drain Life for example. As I'm running Blackrock Foundry and being hit by health gates, I found this ability to be useful. Similarly in the scenario for the Warlock's Fell themed abilities, where the soul fragment traps are health gated. Did you know there's a bunch of illusions called backquote tome of illusions on the auction house? They are pricey, but they teach you quite a lot of illusions. This should go for the entire auction house really, but there are items of everything here. Mounts, transmog, toys, pets, and many more. Always check the auction house for things you may want or need. Especially bows. Press CTRL in transmog menu to get a dressing room preview, if you didn't know. Another small tip in this same tip is you can use the sets menu to apply a piece to your set to see how it looks. Also using other appearances. On top of that previous tip, if you want to keep track of what you're potentially going to use, write down the name of the item on a piece of paper or somewhere on your PC, like a document or notepad. 
then do research on it to find out if you can purchase it right away or not. Really useful and saves time. Did you know you can save outfits you created in the dressing room? It's worth doing this, so you save it for when you want to find a new item, or apply the set itself, or even finish the set in some way. There's many good reasons to do this, and works out better than the WoWet 3D character creator. If you want to make a transmog or transmount set which looks good, here's a tip in terms of theme. Make sure two or more items matches the other in terms of color scheme. For example, blue shoulders, blue belt, and blue weapon preferable. But if there is, and it's likely, if there's a secondary color, make your transmog fit that second color. It's never wrong to use a transmog set from another class. I use shaman sets on my hunter, if that isn't obvious, because they look cool. And do note, some shaman sets are shaman only. Usually there's global transmog pieces for some sets. PvP sets are the only ones that are class specific. That's all. Hopefully you learned something from this. There are probably plenty of other rare tips and tricks I missed. If you know of any, put them down in the comments. Also if you like the video, be sure to click like. If you're interested in more of this content, also put that in the comments. And if you want to, subscribe to my channel. Music is sourced in the description.